day It ran you away Cause he's the one Who moves the pain Prince of peace King of glory Holy God We worship thee Fill the arms Just a generation To worship him To lift him high Praising the King of kings And Lord of lords Here we are If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Hi everyone! Here's a step-by-step -step guide on how you can book your e-ticket online. First, log on to sibkl.org.my Then click on Physical Services. Next, scroll down and click on whichever service you would like to attend. You'll be directed to a new page where you can book your ticket. Please read through the guidelines as we care for your safety. Click on Register. Select Buy on Map. Zoom in to select your seats. Click Checkout. Fill in your details and you'll find the ticket in your email inbox. It's that simple. Looking forward to seeing you at church.
Church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunanyin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Hi everyone! Here's a step-by-step -step guide on how you can book your e-ticket online. First, log on to sibkl.org.my Then click on Physical Services. Next, scroll down and click on whichever service you would like to attend. You'll be directed to a new page where you can book your ticket. Please read through the guidelines as we care for your safety. Click on Register. Select Buy on Map. Zoom in to select your seats. Click Checkout. Fill in your details and you'll find the ticket in your email inbox. It's that simple. Looking forward to seeing you at church.
There's no point going on a journey and not knowing where you're heading. It's the same with church. It's good to know where the church is going, what they are doing, and their heart behind things. If you're new to our church or you want to find out more about SIBKL, join our DNA sessions. Spend two afternoons learning about our beginnings, our values, and why we do what we do fully online on Zoom at the comfort of your home. We will even be sending you some tea time snacks right to your doorsteps for the DNA Tea Session 1. If you wish to know more, join Session 2 to learn about what it means to belong to the body of Christ and stewardship. Register now as we would like to connect with you and welcome you to our SIBKL family. Hi parents, blessed 2022. Our children ministry is back physically on January 16 at 11 a.m. Yes, Thought Zone, 
Link Zone and Kid Zone. All Zones tickets are respectively open for registration at SIBKL's website from Wednesday noon onwards. See you soon. Bye. El Piso Healing Ministry will be hosting an upcoming online Zoom session entitled All Things Are Possible With God. Speaking to us is Eddie Yong, a former Buddhist Taoist temple owner who turned to Christianity after receiving a Damascus experience. He has since ministered to various countries with his wife and founded the Edifier Ministry. Come and join us and be blessed by his sharing. Hope to see you there. discover the convergence of Christian faith and Chinese New Year traditions with the Golden Eagles. Together with our speaker, Dr. Samuel Wang, we'll also take a look at how Chinese Christians celebrate Chinese New Year with Chinese characteristics. More details are on the screen, so hope to see you there! One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your touch and go card. God, it's so good to see you here and welcome back to all those that are online. Praise the Lord. If you are new here in our physical premise right now, <clears throat> can you just give me a wave? If you're new here, anyone up on the balcony or down? Welcome. We have someone that's new here. Welcome. Anyone else? Um, yeah, that lady there and up in the balcony, if there's anyone. You are very special to us. We would get to know, we want to get to know you better. So there's a connect counter outside. We have a little gift for you. So after this, after service, if you can go to the connect counter to just, yeah, come, come and um, get to know our connectors there and we have a little gift for you. So after service, we'd like to invite you there. For all those that are online, we would also like to get to know you if you are new here. There's a link in the description below. Do go there and get connected with us because we also have someone that wants to connect with you online. Thank you so much. And once again, you know, it is so good to be back. We are back here physically, the adults, but the children will be back next week. You know, today we have messages that came in by parents that say, you know what happened to children ministry? Is children ministry booking full? I can't seem to book um, our tickets. We are not open yet. Children ministry is only opening next week, the 16th of January. You can book your ticket for your children on the 12th of January. So do book it. 
book that slot early We are starting with not just Kid Zone. We started last year, Children Ministry with everyone together But when we start this year, we will have the different age group once again Kid Zone for the 12, um, 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 7 to 12 um, We have Thought Zone for the uh, 0 to uh, or two to four years old We have link zone For the four to six years old So we will have the different sections So for all the parents who are booking Do book your different age group Wonderful So that's physical church next week um, Yes and for um, this week You know last week we had Pastor Chu sharing On really the theme of this year In SIBKL Move Forward Take the Future We will have Pastor Lee Chu To share with us today Are you ready church? Are you ready? Come on I'm excited Amen. to hear what God has to say Amen But before we do that Let me just open this service With a time of prayer Thank you Jesus Thank you Lord Father, you are our mighty God And today, even as we come before you We pray that your presence Will fill every single person That is here Every single person That's tuning in online That it, there will be a refreshing spirit That will be released in this atmosphere As we come before you In worship As we listen to the sermon later There will be a refreshing spirit Something will speak into our inner man And Lord Right now, Lord Jesus, I pray that Holy Spirit would fill every part of our homes. Um, if we're tuning in online or whatever space that we're in, every part of this sanctuary, every part of our lives. And so, Lord, we come before you right now, the King of all kings, but yet our Father who is fighting for us, who is jealous for us. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Over to the worship team. Amen. Shalom, shalom. SIBK, rise to your feet here on site. And those who are at home, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen. We want to sing God's favor and blessing upon you and your family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make His face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. Lord, turn His face toward you. Time. Oh yes, the Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Yes, raise your hand, church. Just raise your hand and receive God's blessing. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you. Receive it, God.
we thank you for all your favor, Lord. Wherever you are, just give God the praise. Lift up your voice and say, Lord, we thank you, Lord. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Oh, we thank you, we are blinded, we are shrouded in our chains, in the mountains that block us, in sickness. But know that when the Lord moves in this place, miracles happen, breakthroughs happen, those mountains can be moved, and the giants that block us, they will fall. Lord, we wait as you move in this place. There is a move, Lord, and we are here.
your presence is here. Lord, we cry out, Lord, to you. Because you are the only one that matters. You first. Everything else last. Miracles happen. Healing comes. If you believe that, church, let's sing that one last time. We are here. We are here for you. Come and do. Yeah. 
let's do this can we all just take a deep breath in even right now as we take that breath in it is the presence of God that is filling our beings every breath that we take yes Lord Jesus as we come before you this year have your way Lord Jesus way, not our ways, but your way. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You know, I just feel like how we took that breath in. It is the presence of God that wants to fill our being. Can we just allow that presence of God to fill it more? more, even those online, more, Lord Jesus, more of your presence, Jesus, have your way, allow him, don't disengage, come on, look to God right now, let him feel you, it's like a cup that wants to run over, but you've got to let him soak, don't let it be enough, just to have some way a part of you let him fill up more just that little bit more I feel some of you need to have that presence of God to be over your head to be completely submerged in it right now this new year 2022 come let's move in deeper deeper allow the current of the Holy Spirit to take you but you can only do that if you're fully submerged in the Holy Spirit worship by praying for all those that are unwell in your bodies right now if you have something that you are unwell with can you just lift up your hands can you just lift up your hands wherever you are and if you're at home you are unwell in your body and you want prayer I want you to lift up your hands as well those that are well don't lift up your hands so all over the sanctuary right now you see people lifting up their hands can those around them you don't have to go near them just stretch your hands to them stretch your hands to them and just allow me to pray for them over the balcony as well on the sixth floor yes Lord Jesus and when you lift up your hands I want you to lift up your faith right now even those at home if you're when you lift up your hand lift up your faith come on let faith arise faith arise we have a healer our God is a healer and he wants to encounter you today Holy Spirit power of the living God Lord we want to declare that finished work on the cross over every person that has their hands raised right now Lord I pray lift up their spirits right now lift up their faith take away unbelief you are a God that heals you are able and so right now Father let faith arise and Lord I pray all over this place all those that have their hands raised reached out to those that are unwell Lord let your faith arise as well as you reach your hands to these people Holy Spirit Heavenly Father right now we just want to declare the finished work on the cross over these lives over those that are online as well Lord whatever sickness that they have cancer the back pains leg pains tumor whatever liver conditions issue of the blood in the name of Jesus we want to pray that it be gone right now in Jesus name we declare that by Jesus' stripes they are healed in Jesus name I pray Amen 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 we are not done 
can you also reach your hands out? Ready? Stretch your hands out to those whose name is on the screen right now. On your screen, everyone at home, if you're there, can you just reach out to these three names? We just want to pray for these three people. Join me. Heavenly Father, we want to commit Pei Ling into your mighty hands. Take away her throat cancer, Lord Jesus. You see how it has affected her and how she's battling this. We just declare that Pei Ling, you are a daughter of God. In the name of Jesus, let healing come over Paling right now. For Cynthia Lee, for her breast cancer, stage 2, Lord, in the name of Jesus, break into every cell in her body over Cynthia's life right now. Lord, we want you to push back. We ask you to push back these cancer cells in the name of Jesus and let your healing power come over Cynthia in Jesus' name. For Tang, Lord Jesus, T.S. Tang, for her nose tumour, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, let this tumour, Lord Jesus, subside. Lord, we want to pray for your healing power to just even take place, take reign over her nose right now, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. So, Lord, we commit paling, Cynthia and Tang. I want to declare your healing over the three of them, right now this morning at the beginning of 2022 you will heal them in jesus name i pray amen amen wow praise god amen the presence of god is just so strong here i don't know about you but isn't it so good to be in the house of god amen before Um, you sit down, just turn to someone and say, God bless you. God's presence is over you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Yeah, why don't you greet each other and say, it's still New Year. So if I haven't greeted you, Happy New Year. It's not too late. Amen. So to all those online, well, it's the first time I'm meeting you this year. So I will still say, Happy New Year. Be blessed. Amen. So Heavenly Father, what a powerful thing it is to come into your presence. Truly, Lord God, you will never leave us nor forsake us. And so, Lord, we want to move forward this year with you. In Jesus' name, we all say, Amen, amen. How many of you would really want to move forward this year and in the years to come with Jesus? Amen, if you want to, say yeah. Amen, if you're online and you know it's so exciting, we discovered that people turn in to uh, join us online, even from Russia, from Romania. Well, how did we know it was Russia? The scenery outside their window was winter. So praise God for that. Come on, let's give God a resounding, resounding thanksgiving. Amen. Only God can do the impossible. You know, the theme of our church this year, and perhaps even as we move on, will be moving forward into the future. So why don't you join me and just say, moving forward into the future. Oh, yeah, moving forward to take the future, but I'm going to say moving forward into the future. So let's say this together. Moving forward into the future. And today I'm going to talk about crossing over and moving forward. And really, I want us to really look at Joshua chapter 3 because Joshua chapter 3 is really a chapter, a pivotal chapter in the book of Joshua where they have now got to cross over from the wilderness into Jordan, uh, across, across Jordan into the promised land. So this chapter is a pivotal chapter. And that is what I feel God is also saying to us. As much as the last two years, there has been a time of the pandemic, and now God is slowly bringing us back to the church, God is saying to us, even in Malaysia, even in SIB, now you have to move forward. You cannot go backwards, pre-pandemic. There's no such thing as back to usual. Impossible. The pandemic has shifted everything, just like for the children of Israel. By the time they reach the River Jordan, they have to make a decision. Either they cross over beyond the Jordan into the Promised Land or they would stay in the wilderness forever. The call to cross over did not come from Joshua. 
it came from God Himself who said to Joshua, Moses, that my servant is dead, now you cross over and take all these people with you, verse 2, and cross over, get ready to cross the Jordan and enter the land that I'm about to give to you. Now I want to say this. In Joshua chapter 3, they are now going to cross over the Jordan. So turn with me and I'm going to do this. We are not going to have it on screen or online. I'm going to ask you to read your Bibles. Why? Because we are crossing over into a territory and so we want to grasp what God is saying very well. You don't want to just watch the screen and then zone off. I want you to engage with the Word. Amen? All right, don't worry. If you haven't brought your physical Bibles, praise the Lord. There's such a thing called digital online Bibles. So turn to your handphones. You can pick it up. Praise the Lord. And I'm going to read it. Are you ready? If you are ready, say Amen. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out from Shittim and went to the Jordan where they camped before crossing over. After three days, the officers went throughout the camp, giving orders to the people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the priests who are Levites carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Then you will know which way to go, since you have never been this way before. But keep a distance of about a thousand yards or two thousand cubits between you and the ark. Do not go near it. Joshua told the people, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. And Joshua said to the priest, Take up the ark of the covenant, pass on ahead of the people. So they took it up and went ahead of them. And the Lord said to Joshua, Today I will begin to exalt you in the eyes of all the people so that they may know that I'm with you as I was with Moses. Tell the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant, when you reach the edge of the Jordan's waters, go and stand in the river. And Joshua said to the Israelites, Come here, listen to the words of the Lord your God. This is how you will know that the living God is among you, that He will certainly drive out before you the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, and the Jebusites. See the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth will go into the Jordan ahead of you. Now then choose 12 men from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe. And as soon as the priests who carry the Ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, set foot in the Jordan, its waters flowing downstream will be cut off and stand up in a heap. So when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. And now the Jordan is at flood stage all during harvest. Yet as soon as the priests who carried the ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. It is piled up in a heap a great distance away at a town called Adam in the vicinity of Zarathon while the water flowing down to the Sea of Arabah, the Salt Sea, was completely cut off. So the people crossed over opposite Jericho and the priests who carried the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the middle of the Jordan while all Israel passed by until the whole nation had completed the crossing on dry ground. What an awesome, awesome chapter. You know, if you want to know something about what happened in the last one year, is that even as the Lord stirred me to build the Malaysian United, and there was a call to build the Malaysian United Firewall, right? This was the chapter that God took me through. And that is why even when the church this year began to realize that God is taking us into the future, beyond our 27 years of history, into the next move of God, I knew that God had prepared us to really go back and understand what is happening in this chapter so that we can transit out of the last 27 years into the future that God has ahead of us. That is why today I want to share with you a a prophetic word that came to us in SIBKL in 2000, I think it was 2004. 2006, we moved into Banggo Nanjin. But do you know that actually in 2004, we were in, at CP Tower? How many of you were with us in CP Tower? Put up your hands, let's see. Wow, so few only. Huh? How many online put type I was in CP Tower? Probably very few, because we were only about a thousand over people. And at that time, we were looking for a place to, 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 to contain the, 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 the people that were congregation that was growing. Actually, the congregation tried to fit inside this. Can you imagine 1,000 people fitting into a space of only 700 square feet? It was really tough. So we were looking for a place and we didn't know where to go. And then one night, 
at the corporate prayer meeting. And that's why the corporate prayer meetings are still the most important meetings in the church because that's when the leaders come together. And God always speaks when leaders gather because they are His generals. Why should He speak if the generals are not there? So He spoke. And one man who have never been to our prayer meeting came in and gave a powerful prophetic word. I'm going to summarize it because I really cannot remember the whole of it. And he said, SIBKL is a movement. It is not just a church. God is using this church to bring a movement. And he said this, if you fully obey me, you will reach your destiny. But if you do not obey me, you will become, like, now he actually used those words, like a whitewashed sepulchre. People passing by will look at your build, building. We'll look at, we were looking for a building. We'll look at you and your building and wonder, what on earth happened to this church? In other words, God was saying to the church, we are more than a church. We are a movement. Now, last year, in November, when the church reopened, roughly about the middle of the, the, the reopening, I can't remember whether it's November or December, the Lord again reminded us, and there was a prophetic word given, and, and it said, the church is a movement. We must now move from the last 27 years into another move of God. But you may say to us, what if we don't move? Then we become a monument. If we are a monument, what's the difference? In fact, on that uh, November prophecy just given only two weeks, I gave it so I know what I did, only about last month, all right, two months, a month and a half ago, what the Lord says, SIB is a movement, it is not, never to become a monument. In 2019, before the pandemic, we celebrated our 25th wedding, uh, not wedding anniversary, sorry, our 25th anniversary. I'm about to celebrate 50th anniversary. Ah, we will get there, all right? But we celebrated our 25th uh, anniversary. How many of you were there? If you were there, wave your hands. Wonderful, wonderful. Online, yeah. But at that anniversary, God did marvellous things and reminded us of what He did. Just like Moses did marvellous things. But you cannot stay where Moses was. They must now move into a new dimension of God. And that is the same with SIBKL. Much as the move of God in the last 27 years has been wonderful, glorious. We cannot stay there. We must now go into the next move of God. Otherwise, we become a monument. A monument is where we celebrate our success. We look at all the pictures in the wall and we feel we have arrived and we are comfortable. And it's all about man's glory before long. And the worst thing is that we, cannot, we are not moving, but God is moving. Do you know that the children of Israel in the entire journey in the wilderness had to follow the cloud? Do you know when the cloud stops, they have to stop? When the cloud moves, they have to move? What is very inconvenient about this of a movement is they are so dependent on God. They're so dependent on following God. I, I always tell myself, it must be terrible to be a housewife in those days. Just when you hang up your clothes to dry, the cloud moves. Then you have to pull it all down and start uh, thinking of what else to do. And then just when you thought, no, this time I'm not going to wash my clothes. I'm going to really wait for the cloud. Then your dirty clothes pile up because the cloud is going to stay forever. The last two years, the cloud stopped. But the purpose of the cloud stopping is not just to stop. It's to allow us to rest from our activity and to recalibrate. The last two years were the years of recalibration, resetting of the church, resetting of our relationship with God, asking ourselves once again, God, what are you doing? The problem where there's no reset and there's no forward movement, do you know something? We can do the same things, the same way, and close one, I don't need God also can do. So in the new move of God, we are going to like what Joshua said in Joshua 3 verse 4, my favourite verse in Joshua 3, you have never been this way before. Why is it my favourite verse? Because when the Malaysian United Firewall started, it was like walking on water. You should have seen me cry so much because I've never been this way before. So church, SIB, SIBKL is going forward in the direction we have never been this way before. But we don't have to panic. Because I'm going to give today, we're going to tell you how you're going to navigate this new move of God. But I want to say this one thing, and it's a really powerful thing. This, you know, when the children of Israel went across to the promised land, it was not just about a destination. Promised land was not just a destination, but it was the destiny of the children of Israel. 
if the children of Israel stayed in the wilderness, they have not arrived at the destiny. Their calling to be a nation would be totally unfulfilled. But when they walked across the Jordan, they entered their moment of destiny. And the promised land became theirs even until today and until Jesus comes again. That too is the call of God to SIB. I believe with all my heart. And this morning, the Lord began to lay it upon me and say, tell SIBKL, they are not just stepping out from one season into the future. They are stepping into the next moment that will bring SIBKL into its destiny. In the same way, God said the same thing to me. When the firewall started, you are walking into your destiny. Destiny is different from destination. And that is why we must ask ourselves, how do we do that? How do we reach all this? Now, the first thing to ask is that, why must the nation of Israel do this crossover? Why can't this, what is happening on the other side of the Jordan? What is beyond Jordan? Beyond Jordan is Jericho. Jericho represents two things. Jericho represents a stronghold, a fortress. In fact, it was such a powerful fortress and you've been to Israel and you see the ruins of Jericho, it's really a huge fortress, so much so that the foundations of Jericho are still visible today. And in that fortress would be salvation. Because in that fortress, it was also holding down the souls of men. Rahab would be there. But more important than that, once Jericho was destroyed, do you know Joshua? It's a very exciting book, Joshua. Joshua went on to defeat all the northern kingdom, the southern kingdom. By the time you reach Joshua chapter 12, Joshua had, and the children of Israel had completely removed, dismantled 31 strongholds, 31 giant kingdoms. Everybody said, wow, right? By the time they reached chapter 12, 31, one giant or one stronghold of darkness for every day. That is what God is saying to us. Why must we now move into a different season? So that you and I, as believers of Jesus Christ, don't constantly live under strongholds of oppression. And I want to say this, what are strongholds of darkness? Strongholds of darkness is where the kingdom of darkness rules. When the kingdom of darkness rules over us and over our territory, souls of men are trapped in darkness. Not just souls of one man or two men, communities. Ethnic groups, one of the powerful things this week that happened was the seven days of, uh, of, of consecration uh, that the Millennium United Firewall did, where we came in every night and there would be wonderful teaching. The last three nights, Pastor James Kawaya shared some powerful understanding of the, why we must move forward, why there must be a breakthrough, why there must be, if we want to see something change in our land, something must happen. And he talked about communities, ethnic groups. I'll leave that slide up there. Communities, ethnic groups. What is happening about ethnic groups? They are in total bondage. Every racial group is in bondage. There's so much hurts, so much wounds in the land. How, these are strongholds. And as long as the wounds and hurts of the land stay, there will be racial divide. And even as he talked about the ethnic group of the, of the Orang Asal, the, the, the natives of the land. Then he talked about families. Families, do you know that there's so much strongholds holding down our families? Which is why we have family problems. Family problems are a result of strongholds holding down of darkness, still clouding our minds. What is strongholds of darkness? Darkened mind, darkened understanding, darkened reaction, darkened response. That creates lots of conflicts. And that is why even in our economy, in our workplace, the economy is also under oppression, which is why you will see that one of the major things that both the and pandemic and the floods have, you know what's the purpose of the floods and the pandemic? It unveils what is already happening. You know, we, we heard that in the, in the whole pandemic situation, thousands, 7,000 divorces. Why? Because strongholds of darkness is causing much dysfunctionality in families. In the same way, why was there so much of the, we saw even a lot, uh, didn't we, in the, during the pandemic, that the foreign workers were getting, many of them had COVID. Why? Because of the oppressive and the, the kind of economies that we were encouraging, that we were in our nation, whether even the foreign workers, there's modern day slavery. But worse than that, when the floods came, 
we also discovered another stronghold. We have been abusing the land. So when the flood waters came, where the abuse of the land, there's destruction of the land, and the destruction of the land, floods come, and so lives are being destroyed. In the midst of all that, the church, the governments. Now let's look at government. You know, you and I are really concerned about the government. But I want to say this. You know, as I, as I interceded for the nation, as I cried to God, and I saw all the ridiculous mistakes and ridiculous postures of our government, and I almost felt as impossible to pray for our nation, the Lord said this very clearly to me. They are under the strongholds of darkness. They have darkened minds, darkened understanding, darkened wisdom, darkened decisions. So the whole thing is chaos. The whole thing is chaos. And that is why the church, what about the church? If, there is dark, if the church does not move into this new season, why must it that we must move into this new season? When the church does not move, when God says, now is the time, move. If we don't, the church is under siege. And it is subject to market forces. The church will be subject to market forces, which is why, again, on the last night of the seven days last week, Philip Lin said this one thing, the agenda of prayer should never be an, about the national politics. It should be about the kingdom of agenda. How can you dismantle this strongholds of darkness? Arise, shine. You know, I wanted to do this and I couldn't do it. I was hoping, got time, I asked Isaac to do it. The white dot go, do, 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 bigger, bigger, bigger and destroy and dismantle strongholds of darkness. That is God's call to the church of God in Malaysia at this time. And you say to me, what if we don't do? If you and I don't do, we would be under siege, swallowed up by darkness, and we are fighting a survival mode. Which is why every time something happens, we shiver and we shudder and we go into fear and our lockdown mentality. Praise the Lord. SIB, you are not going to go into lockdown mentality. Everybody says, no, not us. Come on, say, no, not us. Come on, online also say, not us. We are going to arise and shine, all right? This is the call of God that God gave to us in the first seven days, the first one week of this year. The Lord said to the church of God in Malaysia, arise. The word arise is an active word. You know, we like to say, arise, shine. I never sitting down in our pews and doing nothing. No. This is a time the church must go beyond prayer. It must arise, it must awaken, and it must shine. Why? Now, this is the beauty. Because we have the light. Amen? How many of you have the light of God inside you? Oh, please put up your hands. Pastor Chu will be so upset if you don't. And online, if you have the light of God, yes, I do. Because if you do not have the light, you are already under strongholds of darkness. Now, I want to say this. When the light comes, glory comes. And this morning, the Lord began to put inside me, do you know every believer carries a glory cloud? There was one day I was in prayer and the Lord said to me, every believer carries a glory cloud. It's just that they have allowed market forces to drown them. But now, this is a season to arise and to shine. And look at this verse. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Why don't we read it together? Can we do that? Just help me. Can you do that? Give me some energy. I'm really quite tired. Give me some energy. Everybody online as well, help me. We say it strong and loud. One, two, three. Arise, shine. And louder lah. Help me a bit lah. Uh, give me. One, two, three. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you and His glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your, youth, of your dawn. I believe that as we look, you know, this is very interesting. Where there is darkness, light, must, light is the power, right? Pastor Chu always says, do not curse the darkness. Introduce the light. Introduce the light. When the light comes, darkness disappears. Has it happened? Already it's happened in our church. Do you know something? During the pandemic, we did CIA, right? Do you know what happened as we did CIA? Uh, I don't know if Doreen is here. You heard her story in the uh, overnight, uh, watch night prayer, uh, watch night service. Do you know that she act they actually, as they reached out to communities, communities, wanted to know and receive glory. 
They were set free from darkness. They wanted to know how on earth do they now come into the light? And so she brought, wow, families, families came back to the, came to the Lord. Recently, when the floods started, wow, I'm so proud of SIBKL. Really, I'm really, really proud of SIBKL. Do you know our missions worker, uh, uh, Andrew, immediately got into action. He was not going to sit around and just moan and groan. He arose and let the light shine. He gathered the YAs. Pastor Jeremy came along and they went into Sri Muda. They got hold of, oh my gosh, they got so many things. They went and cleaned the houses. They went and I don't know what else they did. They went in boats to rescue people. They went in uh, and they even set up, and Dr. John Fan and even Pastor Chu went down to set up a medical uh, clinic in Sri Muda. Come on, come on. This is a rise shine, a rise shine. And out of that, do you know what happened? As the, uh, and do you know that we discovered for instance, one of my young adults who went and joined that team, went in the first house she went into, it's really like Rahab, the first house she went into, the woman come to her and says, do you know something? Long, long ago, I was a Christian, no? But I just, uh, you know, I married wrongly and then now I am not a Christian and I've divorced. I'm so terrible. I'm so proud. How do I come back? How do I come back into the light? Like Rahab. And do you know, my leader was able to say, Look, this is what you do, blah, 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 blah. Let her into renunciation, all that, and began to say, go back to church. I said, I'm going to go to my cousin's church. This was happening. And on top of it, when we went to Taman Sri Muda, we I can't, uh, this is what we discovered. 50% are from Sabah and Sarawak. And they've all been lost, trapped, as souls trapped by darkness. And do you know what happened? Wow! Our BM pastor arose in his spirit and he says, I'm going to set up a church there. Come on, come on church, come on, come on. This is what's happening in our nation. And do you know something? It's just so amazing. Even yesterday when we had anointing service, families, families were set free from darkness. Families were already burgeoned and came back together. This is really marvellous. And not only that, let me tell you, you see, when darkness comes, it, takes, it swallows everything. Families, economy, money, everything. Do you know that is what, we have a wonderful member and he shared with me this story of what happened during, even during this MCO. So don't think that nothing happened in the MCO. God was moving. If you can see it, God is moving. So he said of how he began to catch hold of his mother, who is a new believer, don't know anything, and the mother only became a believer because he, she saw changes in him. She saw transformation. Salvation and dismantling darkness is about transformation. So she saw him transform. And as she saw him transform, she said to her, she, uh, she was, uh, the, 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 our, 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 our friend was able to say to the mother, you know what? We have so many problems in our family. Look at my brother, your son. He has had been divorced from his wife, signed papers for six to seven years. And not only that, but lots and lots of problems. So many problems that we, I, I wouldn't want to name it all. And even then, so she said to the mother, pray with me. So during the pandemic, they prayed together as mother and son. This is a season of the power of the family altar. It's a really powerful season. The pandemic really raised family altars. And as she prayed over that, do you know what happened? The son or the brother and his wife, seven years divorce, huh? the wife won't have anything to do with the husband because his life is so chaotic. They came back together. They came back together and they were reconciled. And so mighty was the reconciliation that the father, who has so much hated, or really a lot of conflicts with the son, they came back, they reconciled. Father and son reconciled. Husband and wife reconciled. And the children, the three children, which are actually teenage children, they saw all this and they began to say to this believer, this member of our church, and says, can, I fall, can you take me to church? I want to follow the light. Come on. Come on. This is where God is going. Dismantling strongholds of darkness. Do you know what God is doing? And even the, the sister-in-law who has run away went to him and says, can I have a Bible? Can I have a Bible? Brothers and sisters, this move of God, we're going to see transformation. Not just revival, transformation, physical transformation. First, however, the reason why this man could see transformation in his family is that he has been transformed. He has been transformed. There was personal transformation. 
when there's personal transformation, it affects the church. The reason why Andrew, Jeremy could go out there and do all this is that the church is carrying transformation. And when the church carries transformation, families will have transformation. Then society will be transformed. And then only nation can be transformed. Now, I'm going to answer this question. How on earth is this going to happen? Go back to Joshua chapter 3. Three steps or three points are very important if we're going to really move into the next move of God, which is called transformation. Everybody say transformation. transformation. Now we're in the transition, but we're going to move into transformation. Crossing the Jordan is the transition, but the actual situation out there is the transformation. You're going to see families transform. We're going to see our work transform. We're going to see even our nation transform. How does it happen? Three steps. Follow the ark. Everybody say, follow the ark. Stand firmly in the river. Stand firmly. Come on, everybody, you can do better. Everybody say, stand firmly. And then move. Move forward, not move backwards. All right? Now, this is the three steps. We're going to follow this. Let's look at following the ark. I'm going to give you these words. Number one, following the ark must be intentional. So there must be intentionality. Secondly, there must be an intimate relationship. Number two, there must be intense. There must be an intent. What is the intent? It's the intent to listen carefully in order to obey. Until we have obeyed, nothing has happened. So the greatest transition is to move from what we know to obeying. When we move from what we know, what we see, what we hear, every week you come, you hear, you see, it's not enough. Now we must intently hear in order to obey. The greatest transition that the church must make today is not just come and hear sermons, but to obey as you hear. Then transformation will take place. Now turn with me now back to Joshua chapter 3. And I'm going to show you each step of it. When you see the Ark of the Covenant, verse 3, and you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and the priests who are Levites carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Then you will know which way to go since you have never been this way before. But keep a distance of about a thousand yards or two thousand cubits between you and the Ark. Look at it. It's very intentional. God gives intentionality means it's very specific. Specific instructions are given. Specific steps are given. You cannot kalang kabut. You cannot, we cannot transform a nation. We cannot see transformation in our families if we hope for the best. The problem of us in church is that we have wishful thinking. We hear all these good sermons and then we wish it happens. No, it will not happen unless we take intentional steps. Intentional steps to hear, hear intently and then to obey. Look at it. Don't go too near the ark. Why don't go too near the ark? Lest the glory of God will kill you. You are not ready to go too near. Now, what does following the ark really mean in terms of us in SIBKL? I will say this to you. The verse God gave me is this. How can you follow the ark in, and if you don't know the, the, who this God is you're following? You see, the person giving instructions in the new move of God is not your pastor's. It's not your senior pastor. It is a God himself. You have to hear from God yourself. Otherwise, if you just depend on second-hand hearing, you will never move. I also will never move. I must hear God myself. So how am I going to do it? Ephesians chapter 3. Uh, sorry, chapter 1. I ask that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation to know him better. Everybody says, know him better. In the move of God, it's not enough to know God of the last 27 years. Even for us as pastors, I'll say this to you. The last two years, God took me to another level of knowing Him. That is what God did in the whole lockdown. He encountered me, He dealt with me, He unpackaged my thinking and to renew my mind once more again. Until you and I move into the next level of knowing Him better, nothing will change. We still have not crossed over. Not only must you know Him better, why know Him better? So that our heart, aha, we will have an aha moment. We will know our calling, the hope of our calling, our inheritance. What is God calling us to inherit? And also the power. Do you know what this means? What it means is this. In this new season, we must know God more 
more in such a way that we understand why are we in SIBKL Church? Why are we joining online to this spot? Why are we doing that? There's a purpose, a calling. It's more than just simply coming to church. More than simply, when I feel like it, I listen, I don't feel like it. No! It's about your destiny. And as you do that, you have purpose, but you also experience power. That is what's happening. And that is why we are very intentional that this will happen in SIBKL. And that is why we've come out with the MSJ, or the My Spiritual Journey. We know that this whole journey of crossing the Jordan must be intentional. And so we're going to intentionally help everyone, whether they're online or even uh, 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 on physical, we're going to help you do this. Because all the teaching is online, it's available. Even as you come and visit us, you must ask yourself, why do I, am I drawn into this church? Ha! Ah, you must understand your calling. Why is God calling you to join us? And as you understand your calling, you will want to commit, right? Commit is actually, I, I know why I'm coming and I want to belong. Why do we ask you to belong? Not that we need more members. No, it's about coming together to bring about the destiny of our nation, the destiny of our lives, the destiny of our families, the destiny of our work. We want to see all that come together. And that is why we want to grow. So I'm going to say this to you. We're going to invite you to I Belong, which is going to be our time that we share to you. What on earth are we? Who are we? What are we all about? Come and join us. The dates are there. Just take a quick snapshot of it. And I would invite you to come and join us so that you know why are you logging on to SIBKL services. It's not just about hearing good speakers. It's about work. It's about moving from where you are now to your own personal destiny. When every human being arrives at their destiny, your family will arrive at its destiny. Your children will arrive at their destiny. Your church will arrive at its destiny. Your nation will arrive at its destiny. Your racial groups will arrive at its destiny. That is what destiny is so important. And that's why we ask you to come. And we want you to grow. We know that many of you feel that I really don't know God enough. Join us. Look at the QR code. Take it down. We're going to really, I know many of you are new believers. We would like you to grow together. Now, the next thing is that having really followed the ark. You know, when, when, uh, when the Bible says, see the ark of the Lord, See is not just gazing into emptiness. It's following intently, intentionally, intimately, and then we can stand firmly. Now, what does it mean to stand firmly? What does it mean to stand firmly? Look at, look at this whole understanding of the crossing of Jordan. Give this command to the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant. When you reach the banks of the Jordan River, take a few steps into the river and stop there. Now the Jordan is at flood stage all during harvest. Yet as soon as the priests who carried the ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. And the priests who carried the ark of the covenant stopped in the middle of the Jordan while all Israel passed on dry ground. Do you know this is a very powerful understanding? Because the Jordan was at maximum flood at that time. And you know, it's impossible to stand firmly in the Jordan in any river in flood time. You know, how many of you have seen the videos during the flood? It's amazing. We're talking about flood and God sends a physical flood to open our eyes, you know, to give us real physical understanding. I saw cars, lorries swept by the flood. If you and I are not careful, we actually cannot stand the flood. What does the Jordan represent? The Jordan represents all the challenges that will come against us like a flood. Do you know when it rains, it really pours. Problems are going to come in your work, in your family, everywhere in the nation. But do you know what God is saying? It's in the midst of that, that those who are resilient are able to move on. That's what God wants. God doesn't, we cannot just think we are okay. We must make sure we are okay. We must be firmly grounded so that we can stand firmly. So the verse God gave to me, how are we going to do that? Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3, Paul preach, uh, prays a very powerful prayer. He says, I pray that you would be strengthened with the power of the Spirit in your inner being and that Christ will dwell and live, abide, in your heart by faith, that you may be rooted and established in His love. How can we stand firmly when challenges come upon us? Disease, cancer, financial problems, loss, everything in the politics changing. It's not going to be easier. How are we going to stand firmly? We need to be endued 
We need to have an inner strength. Now, I want to say this. At the watch night service, Pastor, Isaac, uh, Pastor Lindy and Pastor Isaac released this word, a new spirit. To move into the promised land, you need a new spirit. Now, we can say to ourselves, be strong and courageous, be strong and courageous. You can say, until the cows come home, it will not happen. How are we going to be strong and courageous? What is this new spirit that will enable us to stand in the challenges in the flood and cause us still to move? What will it be? What can we do? Stand in the flood. Carry, you know what? Still carrying the presence of God, not letting the ark drop. Carry the presence of God, standing firm and still moving forward so that our families can move forward, our nation can move forward, our people can move out of strongholds of dance. How does it happen? It must be a strengthening from inside. The new spirit that God wants to unleash to this church is a really a time to be, I don't know how to call it, yielding to the spirit. Now, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to be very intentional. How it's going to happen. And as we spend time with God, we're going to come into the moments of encountering God, strengthened by God. God you see, prayer altars are primarily to let God deal with issues in our lives and then strengthen us from within until we feel, wow, I have more wisdom, more understanding. This workplace issue, I know what to do. That's what happens. And as that happens, we are also deeply rooted in God's love. When that happens, now God's love is a powerful thing. You and I, in order to be able to stand firm and obey God's difficult instructions, how are you going to obey Him when He tells you to stand in the flood? Don't move. How are you going to do that? How are you going to obey Him to do that? The only reason why you and I can do that is because we are sure, sure, a million times sure that God loves us, that every instruction of Him is crafted in love. Do you believe that? Yeah, that's right. Whether you do or don't, we have to learn to believe that. How are we going to do it intentionally? Ah, SIBKL is the 21 days of consecration to the Lord, all right? It didn't stop only the seven days. We are continuing next week and the week after. What are we going to do? How are we going to intentionally strengthen us from within so that we know how to stand firm? Come into the every night altar beginning Tuesday, Tuesday of next week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Then the following week again, except Taipu Sam, we won't do, uh, up to Friday. And every night, every night, I'm going to be the pastors. We are going to help you understand how to, de how to develop an inner strength, how to allow the glory, how to hang on to the ark, the glory of the Lord, and never lose it and how to stand firmly. What is it that will cause us to be able to deeply entrench in God's love? What will cause us to be able to yield to the Holy Spirit so that the power of the Holy Spirit is actually in us so that it's not by might, not by sheer endurance, not by sheer grit, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. So if you're excited about that, says, yeah, I'm going for it. Amen? Just honestly tell you this. It's very hard for me to do this. Every night I intend to do it because I know Many Christians listen to a thing like this and they don't know what to do. So I am going to be very intentional. The pastors are going to be very intentional. The leaders are going to be very intentional. We intend to lead, do this together. Amen? Why? Because together, we are going to take the future. Amen? If you believe that, say amen. amen. And then we must move. We cannot just hear sermons. We cannot just be trained. We must move. So this is what Joshua said to the children of Israel. When you see the Ark of the Covenant, Joshua 3, verse 3 and 4, when you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and the priest carrying it, you are to move out from your present position and follow it. And then verse 4, then you will know which way to go since you have never been this way before. Wow. What does that mean? It means this. If if we're going to go into the future that we have never been before, we must obey the, in, the immediate instruction. What this verse tells us is this. Your present position, your present where you are, where we are presently, will never move us to be able to take the future. We'll be swallowed up by the future. You see, the danger is this. If you don't move forward into the future, you'll be swallowed up by the future. Swallowed up. Swallowed up. If you think the pandemic was tough, wait till you see the... the Craziness that's happening in the world. Cryptocurrency, blockchains, going, oh, it's too much for me. 
But you only can do it if you, take, you move forward. And the good news is this. You are not meant to move 1,000 steps, one step at a time. We have never been this way before. But if you move one step out of your present position, God will give you the next step. Do you know what? I want to say this? This morning, I wrote this down because God gave me a word. Every step of obedience brings clarity. Every step of obedience brings clarity. S-I-B-K-L must move into its next step and into a position of strength and authority that will allow her to dispossess strongholds of darkness. Well, I cannot repeat it because I have to write it down. That's what the Lord says. What happened during that seven days of, can the worship team come up? Of MUFW was this. Pastor James Kawiyah was doing the teaching. But actually, the wife was not in the teaching. She's a powerful intercessor and she prays for our, uh, for our nation as the husband preaches. Isn't, aren't they amazing? Huh? They don't just let the husband preach and they do their own thing. They actually have a group interceding. As she was interceding for Malaysia, she had a word for Malaysia and she sent it to me on, on Thursday night. On Thursday night, we were struggling to get Pastor James in. Incidentally, all the teachings of James Kawaya is on the MUFW website. I would ask you to go and join that and listen to those sermons because it's really, really uh, understanding, a new understanding, a fresh understanding how to see transformation in our nation, in our families, all right? In our ethnic groups. And so she sent a note to say, this is the word from Malaysia, all right? That's not so important for you. But then she then immediately released, tell SIBKL, there is going to be a visitation of God in your church. Position your church for that visitation. Wow! When I heard it, I was like, oh, I better quickly tell the church. And then she says, many of your people, leaders and pastors, God has already given them a mantle of authority, but they are not functioning in that authority. Why? Eh? Why we're not? Eh? Because we haven't moved out of our present position. We haven't taken the next step. And do you know something amazing? This is happening and a week ago, two weeks ago, Pastor Chu received an understanding from the Lord that now he, we must do something very different. Next week, we must have an encountering God worship session. I don't know what session is going to be like, but it's a session of honouring Jesus, of bringing the glory cloud into our service for the whole one and a half hours next week. It's not going to be sermons. It's about encountering. Why? Because God says, your people must encounter me and their people must experience me. And I give you these three words. The Lord said, when you and I encounter the Lord intimately with understanding and we begin to experience Him in our families, in our workplaces, in our, in our society, there will be an explosion. Encounter, experience, explode. Amen? This is what's going to happen. And that is why God is saying to us, move out of your current position. Move and take on a new position. Can we do all this? How can we do this? You're going to say to me. Can we dismantle strongholds? I'm going to read to you Joshua chapter 3, 9 to 13 from the message. Joshua addressed the people of Israel. Pay attention. Listen to what your God has to say. All right? We're listening now, right? This is how you know that God is alive. How do we know that our God is real? When we see the strongholds of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, and all these enemies being taken down. That their strongholds are being dismantled. How can we do that? You're going to say, this is wishful thinking. We don't do that. God does that. Do you know Jericho's walls was not destroyed by the children of Israel? It was God that destroyed Jericho. But what then is it that we must do? You know what? Very simple. God does what we cannot do. All right? All these strongholds that you see out there, even your family strongholds, you say to me, it's not possible, it's not possible. Of course it's not possible. That's why you need God. Then what is it that I must do? Stay in the glory cloud. Encounter Him. Listen to Him. Follow His instructions. If he, like like my, my friend, my friend who went and prayed with her mother, he merely followed instruction. Pray with her mother. But my mother does not pray. Never mind. Pray with her mother. Most of the time, mother never pray, but he pray only. As he did that and obeyed that, 
Whoa! God did the impossible. How can you reconcile a marriage of seven years divorce? Only God can do. But you and I, we need to follow the ark. Amen? Amen? Come on, if you're excited, stand up. Stand up. Let's rise to our feet and we're going to sing this powerful song. Come on, lead us strong and lead us from the beginning. Amen? Mountains are still being moved. Come on, that's really strong. Strongholds are still being loose. God, we believe it. Yes, we can see that. Wonders are still what you do. Sick bodies. Bodies are still being raised. And giants are still being slain. See that wonders are still what you do. Come on. Every time in Joshua chapter 3, they were told to see, see the ark, see. What were they meant to see? They were meant to see with the eyes that the, of spirituality. Now, you may say, well, that sounds so spiritual, but life is real. I want to start, share with you a thought. You and I, when you go to Pahang, 50, 60 years ago, all we see will be jungle, all right? You and I, when we go to the jungles of Pahang, 60, 70 years ago, all we see will be jungle. When Lim Go Tong went to Pahang and saw the jungles, he did not see jungle. He said to the jungles, give me this mountain. Because he saw something that in the, in the spiritual that has not yet been realized in the physical, he saw wealth, he saw casinos, and out of it came a stronghold that people even, when they have no money, they will still go there to gamble. In the same way, the physical can only come about when you and I see something that the Spirit of God wants us to see. You will hear me say all this, that Pastor Lee is only for you. No! It's for everyone. I'm going to address you this. You see the strongholds in your family. But God is saying to you, don't look at a stronghold. Don't look at a flood. Look at me. And that is why next week we have an encounter again. An encounter weekend. So that we see clearly. We see what God wants us to see and we will say, like Lim Go Tong, give me this mountain. If you believe that, say Amen. amen. Come on, that's where we, we are going. We are here. Hallelujah. Come on, sing we this song are again. Here. of darkness over your family your family will be set free when we push back the forces of darkness over your workplace over your career path over your relationships over whatever it is that troubles you sicknesses wow there will be victory strongholds will crumble like Jericho remember Jericho stronghold will crumble all we need to do not hide 
when we come to Jericho, they walk seven times in obedience and strongholds in your life will fall. Do you believe that? Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, I want to declare prophetically joy will return to our Amen. homes. Amen. Victory, breakout, breakthrough will come to our businesses. Amen. Healing will come to Amen. our bodies. Cancer will go in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Amen. Father God. Amen. We pray there will be breakthroughs in our homes, in our lives, in our relationships. In whatever we do, that 2022 will be a fantastic year, Father Lord. Amen. Will be a year of Amen. breakthrough, Father Lord. Hallelujah, Father Lord. Amen. So God, we honor you. We honor you. Not only today, not only next week, but every day of our lives. We want to honor Jesus. And when we lift Jesus up, He will draw all men unto Him. Hallelujah, Father. We bless you, Jesus. Come on, let's sing the game. We need Can a I move. Just Come say on. Something? Come on. Yeah. I want you to catch Hallelujah. this, all right? I want to say this to you. Next, get, get excited about next week. Now, in order to prepare yourself for next week, come every night into the altar because yes. really I'm going to do my best. I'm going to give you my best shot to take you where God has taken me to understand how to break through, all right? Now, what happens is that God is about to break through into a revival spirit. What is revival? Revival is transformation. When we are revived, there's the life of God flowing to us. Everything around us will be revived. And I want to say this. I'm not a revival person. I don't even really, really understand uh, miracles, like healing and all that. I'm so not revival that when I shared to my prayer teams, uh, Pastor Aaron had to quickly step in and say, she don't believe I do, all right? But do you know what? This year, for the last one year, as the firewall started, the Lord began to say to me, there must be revival in the land. There must be revival. I'm going to read this to you. This is what Julius, Julius Subi said. We must experience revival. If we don't experience revival, we'll be defeated by powers of darkness. When revival takes place in church, transformation occurs. When church is revived, nation is blessed. Revival starts when we have grown to a deeper level. Deep calls to deep. Now listen to this. You cannot stand in shallow waters and expect to challenge deep demonic structures. We must go deeper. That is revival. And this is what the Lord also put within me. I absolutely believe it's going to be exciting from next week as we break a territory, break a territory. The Holy Spirit is going to do a visitation. I believe there'll be sicknesses, right? There'll be miracles. There'll be many things that will change. And I really believe we are in for a wonderful, Amen. wonderful new season. Come on, let's worship. Come on, let's Come see on. miracles. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Miracles happen when you move. Healing is coming in this room.
when you languish you perish don't give in to the spirit of language young adults please don't do that when you languish you are giving in to the forces of darkness you perish when the glory cloud is here Don't move out of the glory. The cloud stopped, but the glory never left. Understand? It's not that the cloud stopped and glory left. No, the glory was always there. You follow the glory cloud, and we believe that the glory cloud is moving again, and therefore we move with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's just come on. Yeah, come on, give God on, let's give a really big offering. clap Amen. offering. Come on, online. Oh, come on, give God a really big clap offering. Hallelujah. Let's let's raise our hands towards the Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we are really excited. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you do not want us to perish by and just miss what you're doing. Father, in the name of Jesus, we do not just sing a song, but we want to declare, O oh Lord God. We want to move with you, oh Lord God. We want to move into this new territory. We want to move into this new season. Because Lord, we thank you. We're not moving alone. You have said to us, wherever we go, every step that we take, oh Lord God, we will take and claim territory, oh Lord God. And you will never leave us, nor forsake us, Lord. As you have been with us in the past move, you will also be with us in this present move, oh Lord God. And now, oh Lord God, May the love of God our Father deeply entrench us. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ overflow into us. And may the fellowship, the relationship we have with the Holy Spirit guide us, lead us until we meet again. And Father, bless, bless your people with such an excitement as they seek you. There'll be fresh understanding. Fresh revelation because the Father wants to reveal yes. what He's doing, oh Lord God. Yeah. And we can follow Him very clearly, step by step. So, Father Lord, we pledge to you that we will have ears that can hear, eyes that can see, and hearts that can understand. And we bless you, Heavenly Father. You have never left us, you have never forsaken us. You are only preparing us for greater glory. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Come on, Come let's on. give God a good clap offering. Whoa. Praise God. Service so now over. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you every night next week, Tuesday onwards to Friday. And next weekend, we'll be honoring Jesus, not man, not the church. Honoring Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us for service today. If you would like someone to pray for you, head over to the link and our pastors and leaders would love to pray and connect with you. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your touch and go card. Hi everyone! Would you like to get to know SIBKL a little bit more? If you've ever had such questions like, how can I join a cell group? How can I serve in a ministry? How can I be discipled? How can I be a member? How can I join one of our SIBKL events? Or any other questions, then I invite you to click on the link below and we will connect with each other via WhatsApp. One of our Connect leaders will reach out to you. We would love to connect with you. So we invite you to connect with us. God bless. I need you to bring me down. 
on my knees, humbly at your feet, laying down all pretense and all foolish pride. Take me, O、oh、Lord, and surround me on every side. And dreams, Lord, crush it if you must. Search me, Lord, and know my heart. Unveil my inmost part. There is hope yet. There is light still. Of my regrets, your mercies and your faithful ways. To you I look in vain. You never let me go, but you'll.